So right now, uh, start with setting up a company. But before you set up a company in Workday or a company hire, you need to set up a reorg. Reorg is nothing but a reorganization. It's a kind of head or a place where you can track purpose details for each and everything. Okay. So you can track when the company was set up, when the company hierarchy was set up, when the company was rolled up to company hierarchy and so on. So that's what you can do. Pretty much uh, everything you can see like the roles were assigned to that company and who did that, did that, everything. Yes. So let's go to, uh, the task is pretty simple. Create a reorg. We use the same which we did last time, Twitter. unique name so in future whenever we need this for our transactions and configurations we can use it we can remember this name the reorg okay reorganization date from which date you want to track history or the audit of the organization that you're going to set up so i'm saying 0101 or their effective date or the origin or reliability date why it's not working zero one so once you done that, okay here. Okay. Now the thing is, if you click on this uh, three dots here, three dots or a related action, frequently we call it as a related action. Somewhere you would see this three dot as a related action button. Somewhere you would see only three dots. In general, we call it as a related action means the related action of this object. What you can do. Okay. After you create an object, the best practice is you go to integration ID and change their reference ID. Now, what is the reference ID? Reference ID is nothing but you can use to do a bulk upload data in the system or through integration, you can use it to connect with other systems outside of Workday. So basically either integration team uses it or the functional team to upload the data in bulk. Integration team use the reference ID to link the system with other applications outside of Workday. That's the best practice. So I go to edit the reference ID. Now system would have generated their own reference ID here by default. So we'll get rid of this. We'll give our own reference ID here, which is easy to remember. So we'll say TW Reorg or something like this. TW Reorg, you can give anything. General practices, you give some alphanumeric uh, values here, like C102 or anything which resembles the tech name. So once it's done, we'll create the company hierarchy now. Okay, and then we'll create the company. So let's create the company hierarchy. Ask this person create company hierarchy. New York. Now, from which date this company hierarchy is in effective? When this company got in place or hierarchy got in place, that date it can be 2022 also, it can be 1800 also, it can be anything in 1990s also. So, since whenever this company got set up or established, that is the date which we have to put here. So, for now, it's picking up the date from the reorg. So, it would have given today's date in the reorg here, it would have shown you the today's date in this field also. Now we'll give a name here. So we'll say Twitter consolidations or Twitter holdings uh, company hierarchy. Okay, we'll give a sweet short code here. So we'll say Twitter holding company hierarchy. Now we'll just use this code in the reference ID also. So include code in the name means bring this code before this company hierarchy name subtype this company visibility is everyone 
Now, we'll assign some roles here because we would need these roles later on. And how the security works? The security works from bottom to top. Okay, sorry, from top to bottom. So anything you assign at the top level, that mm -hmm. will be added to sub level also, or subordinates also, or the sister firms also. So this is the parent company hierarchy, and anything which will assign it to this company hierarchy, that will also get all these roles once you assign that company. So I'll show you for now. I'll assign the accounting manager because this is the role that we are going to need for opening up the ledger periods and everything. So we'll say assign to Teresa Serrano. Perfect. Let's assign a few more roles. And you would see later on that once we set up our company, at that time it will not show any roles, but once you assign the company to company hierarchy here, it will show all the roles got inherited. So let's say accounts, payable, settlement services. Let's assign this also to Teresa Serrano. Right. So first of all, we create a role, maintain a sendable role. Then we create a security for that role. Then we assign those roles. Now there's a difference here. You are in role-based security group. So this is a role-based security group. If you see heading here, okay, assignable role. This is a role-based security group. You assign it to positions. If you see the name is coming on, but the position is coming first. Delivered security groups are, but remaining you have to create by yourself. Now we have assigned this. We hit okay. Remember, we have to use this code here and in the reference ID we have to paste it. So we'll go to okay, integration ID. Now, if I type THCH, it should bring up my company right here automatically. See, that's the okay. reference value. Now, company hierarchy is done. Now, we have to set up our company. So, we'll say create company. Our company. So Twitter, Elon Musk, <laughs> he bought the company, come on. Twitter Inc. It's $48 billion for. So we'll give it like Twitter 101. We'll code, type. You know what, he just uses uh, like only 7% of the shareholdings to buy his company. Just seven So here I want to talk about this function for 30 seconds. So, so visibility right now is set up to everyone. Okay, what it means that anyone, either that person is assigned to this company at any role or not, that person can also see this company. When they want to search this company, they will be able to see that. Second option says, no, if I have assigned any role to this company, only that person can see. Suppose I was assigned accounting manager to Gori, then only Gori can find this company in the search bar or accounts level manager to, uh, then only you can see. It's like that. The role assignees and members means I was assigned a role also and you are a member also. Okay, it's not an all condition. You have to wear role assignee and a member also. 
role assigned of current and superiors. Either you have a role assigned to the current company or either the parent company. If you have the access in the superior company also, then also you can get the access here to view this company. By default, in World Day, we keep the visibility to everyone. We don't change it. Okay. Any implementation you will see. I'm not sure about the uh, companies, but 99.99% uh, of the companies would set this to everyone. Now, remember, we have to use this code. Go to integration ID. Where is that? I got in or what? And then perfectly fine now. Now I want to show you one thing. If I go further, so let's put the code, let's go to our company first. Now if you go to roles here, you would see that nothing is here. Mm -hmm. No role has been assigned to anyone because we haven't done a sort of the company. But once I assign the company, the company hierarchy, you would see that here, you should tell us a Serrano inheritance. Means it was the access to inheritance from the superior. We'll set up some basic details of the company, like contact details. So we'll go to company. Company contact information. In case you have not seen that, go to the three dots, related action, company, and then edit company contact information. Mm -hmm. Here we'll give a phone number, a primary phone number of the company. We'll say phone device, it's a mobile. It's primary use for billing and shipping. Address, add one US address here. Okay. This address would be used for primarily for billing, limit to shipping, mailing also, other business also. This address would be used for storage, street address, and text reporting also. Visibility again, it's a public email, let's add Twitter at gmail.com. So address is done now. Now we'll add an ownership detail. Like who owns this company? In case you haven't seen the previous task, I went to the three dots come and added company contact information. That's yeah. the place where I had given this contact information. But after this, we have to do one more thing here. Couple of more things. So we'll go to this edit company ownership details. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll add any random company just to show the functionality here. The purpose is to show you the functionality. We'll say that GMS USA, Global Modern Service USA, is the owner of this company, owning 100% of this company in equity and 100% in terms of your income also. In real world scenario, you would have at least two, three companies owning like 25, 50, 75 kind of ratio 
of the company, it can be 10% also. <clears throat> because if you see the angel firms, uh, I'm not sure if you are uh, aware about this, but the angel firms are the firms who invest in startups, right? Mm -hmm. So time somebody starts uh, for a funding of their startup, uh, series A, they start, initial seed funding, they call it. Then you have seen this uh, sharp thing, right? Where they have gone to uh, these three people and said, uh, this is our business model and we would like to uh, invest in our business. Then they said, okay, I'll take, uh, I'll give you 10 lakh instead of 50% equity or 10% equity. So this is what all about that, that they will own 10% of the business or 25% of the business. In return, they will give 100% or like 10 lakh, 15 lakh, kind of that thing. Now ownership is done. Now we'll add the tax IDs. Again, go to company, tax details. We'll go to tax ID here. As it's a US company, let's see USC here. We'll give our random tax ID type here, which is employee ID number. Identification number, we'll just give a number here. Like, what is the ID number basically in short? Sure. India, okay. like GST in Assam, in, okay, this is like state tax, mm -hmm. GST. This is central state tax, the number, company identification number, all those things. <clears throat> so just like this, you can add multiple values here. There is no such restriction. Mm -hmm. Once you've done that, there's still no rules here. Now, as I have to assign this company to company hierarchy, I'll do one thing. I'll go to this TWCH. Uh, now I just went to my company hierarchy. I'll click on these three dots here. I'll go to reorg. Okay. This is what we have to go. Mm -hmm. Dots of your company hierarchy. Click on this assign included organizations. Give the reorg name. Hit OK. Now give your company name here, which you want to include in this. So I've added Twitter here. OK. Now if you go to details here, it will show this company hierarchy includes this company here. OK. Now, I want to show you one. So as I assigned the company to company hierarchy, so the rows should have inherited from top to bottom. So let's check it out. Go to rows. Okay. Why it's not showing up? Uh, maybe the effective date is, is not correct. Let me just change the effective date. Sometimes yeah, it's showing up. Maybe the one was we refresh or maybe by tomorrow. Okay, it will show all these things. The content. Okay, no need to worry because maybe of effective date, it's not showing up right now. But maybe by tomorrow it will show, and definitely it should show the accounting manager role and accounts payable specialist also, accounts payable settlement specialist also in this role section. So big companies keep on acquisition and hiring or uh, acquiring new companies like Google also. They acquire many companies or big four companies like PwC, Deloitte. They hire any consulting firms. 
or companies. So right. hire that company, okay? Mm -hmm. That could also be the effective date because in their system of Deloitte, mm -hmm. the was not there earlier, and it's getting effective from when when they have purchased it. Mm 